मोदी गवर्नमेंट नोटिफाइज सी ए प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी वॉक्स द सी ए ए टॉक कोई भी भारतीय मूल का नागरिक है उसकी नागरिकता नहीं जाएगी ये स्पष्ट है सिक्योरिटी बीफ्ड अप इन शाहीन बाग ऑपोजिशन सीज रेड रेन्स फायर मिस्टर मोदी इज लूजिंग ही इज गोइंग टू बी बिलो टू ट्वेंटी द फोर ही इज ट्राइंग टू पोलराइज इट बिग सी ए शो डाउन अ हेड ऑफ पोल्स टॉप फोकस ऑन इंडिया फर्स्ट So the Narendra Modi government today notified the Citizenship Amendment Act the amendment to rules 2024 to enable minorities persecuted on religious grounds in Pakistan Bangladesh and Afghanistan to get Indian citizenship the government clarified Hindus Sikhs Buddhists Jains Parsis and Christians persecuted on religious grounds in these countries Pakistan Bangladesh and Afghanistan will get citizenship in India once they renounce citizenship in these countries but this notification has sparked off an angry war of words with the opposition asking why have muslims been left out also questioning the timing of this notification is there merit in the criticism that this is aimed to polarize just before the crucial 2024 lok sabha elections we debate i'm gorav savant as always let's get started with the headlines at 10 Police intelligence and security agencies on a red alert across the country after notification of CAA sources insist any attempts to spread misinformation will be monitored and prosecuted Big blow to State Bank of India Supreme Court junks SBI plea to defer rolling out electoral bonds data SBI directed to disclose data to the election commission by 5 pm tomorrow two new election commissioners to be named in four days by a three member panel led by prime minister narendra modi sources say lok sabha dates will not be announced till vacancies are filled BJP Congress top brass in a huddle for 2024 polls BJP keeps focus on Karnataka Gujarat Bihar and Uttar Pradesh sources say many sitting Karnataka MPs may be dropped Big atmanirbhar defense boost for India Prime Minister Narendra Modi announces mission Devastra the first flight test of made in india agni 5 missile with mirv so four years after the citizenship amendment act was passed in parliament the government today issued notification for rules for its implementation the law will enable persecuted religious minorities in three countries pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh to get citizenship in india the opposition is already up in arms mamta banerjee chief minister of bengal meets says she will not allow the implementation of the ca in bengal in tamil nadu mk stalin too has said that this law is against communal harmony the government has repeatedly clarified that the ca does not take away citizenship of any indian citizen but have battle lines already been drawn ahead of 2024 lok sabha elections a political bureau with a top story weeks before india heads into crucial general elections and four years after it was passed in the parliament the modi government has notified rules for the citizenship amendment act caa grants indian citizenship to refugees who came to india before december 31st 2014 on religious grounds it covers three neighboring countries afghanistan pakistan and bangladesh and includes six minority communities hindus sikhs buddhists jains parsis and christians 
এবং অসংখ্য মানুষ যারা রয়েছে ধর্মীয়ভাবে প্রতারিত হয়ে যারা ভারতবর্ষে এসে আশ্রয় নিয়েছে তাদের প্রত্যেকের জন্য এই আইন অত্যন্ত ফলপ্রসূ হবে এবং এই আইন নাগরিকত্ব দেওয়ার আইন একটা লোকেরও নাগরিকত্ব এই আইনের মাধ্যমে যাবে না While the government has assured that CAA will not take away citizenship of any Indian citizen, Mamta Banerjee was the first to oppose the law. Other opposition parties are also questioning the timing of CAA implementation. way they are trying to bring it today is to make the election polarized mr modi is losing he is going to be below 220 therefore he is trying to polarize it the last weapon is caa rules and to divert from the real issue of electoral bonds to ab ye sab karke hindu musliman karenge भारत पाकिस्तान करेंगे भारत बांग्लादेश करेंगे ये खेल आखिरी खेल उनका चल रहा है चलने दो लागू होने दो ये खेल करते रहते हैं लोग अभी जब तक तो चुनाव है तब तक सीए सीए खेलेंगे खेलने दो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर्स हैज क्रिएटेड अ वेब पोर्टल फॉर सीएए एंड ऑल एप्लीकेशन विल हैव टू बी सबमिटेड ऑनलाइन ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे So this time the government is leaving nothing to chance. Facts are being put out in public domain. The government has clarified CA does not take away citizenship of any Indian citizen irrespective of what their religion might be. The ruling party is also claiming this. The government insists that this law, CAA, the notification of the law only enables persecuted minorities in a specific region which is Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh to get citizenship in India. Rules are also being put online. BJP says this is not anti-Muslim, but tension remains high. Information just coming in, and we'll show you those images. Police forces have been deployed in numbers in sensitive areas to ensure that peace is maintained. And the kind of violence that was seen last time, there are no riots, no violence, and no fear mongering. But there is already some fear mongering. Joining me on India First is Saira Shah Halim. Now we have kept a non-political. panel of analysts to get you all sides of the story saira shah halim sayyad asad abbas and shubhrashra join me on the show and saira shah halim i want to begin by asking you ma'am mamta banerji has in the past used words like ca implementation over my dead body today she said she will not apply, uh, allow it in bengal why this opposition if persecuted religious minorities in bangladesh pakistan and afghanistan get indian citizenship ma'am Say good evening, Gaurav. First, let's be very clear. It's all about the electoral bonds, and the rest is just distraction. Right now, the BJP government is panicking that the Supreme Court verdict in the morning is going to serve notice to the SBI to provide data on the buyers and Ma sellers. So that's a separate story. That's a separate story. This is a separate bonds. story. You know, electoral <laughs> bonds. We we just had a debate. We've just had a discussion on electoral bonds just half an hour earlier. This is about CA. My question to you is very specific. If Hindus, a religious minority in Pakistan, Hindus are a religious minority in Bangladesh, they're a religious minority in Afghanistan. If Hindus or Sikhs or Buddhists or Jains, if they get citizenship in India, why this opposition? See, firstly, Gaurav, this is a violent. violation of the constitution of india article 14 because here it amounts to defining who a persecuted community is based on religion it is an open challenge to secularism it is an open so challenge so hindus are being discriminated in pakistan it's uh, secularism of india that is challenged god up if you could kindly allow me to finish and then we can you know debate over this because here it is very clear that the sant parivar has nothing but a communal agenda and it is completely disregarding every other community aside from the six communities that are mentioned in the very contentious caa can we on the ahmadiyya muslims a persecuted community are ahmadiyya you can uh, they are considered muslims you know they no, are ahmadiyya are second. considered muslims you got got of you know it will get very difficult if you allow me to if you will not allow me to talk just for just for a minute because here 
the Kerala government has very categorically said that the Citizenship Amendment Act is a discriminatory act which is resorting to relegate the Indian Muslims to second-class citizens. Because here, it's very apparent because here there are six communities that are mentioned who are the persecuted com community and it is a violation In Pakistan, of Bangladesh and Afghanistan. I'm just clarifying no, no, for no, the benefit no, of our viewers. Second. Viewers understand that the Ahmadiyya community in Pakistan is a persecuted community. So, the you want Ahmadiyyas to get Indian citizenship? I'm saying anybody is not about the Ahmadiyyas, Gaurav. It's about any persecuted community from any faith, any religion. If they apply for asylum or citizenship of India, it should be given without debating on the community. Why is one particular, tree, one particular community not? included in the ambit, you know, of the CAA, that is the main contention. And here, just before the 2024 general election, the government... Shubhrashtra, Shubhrashtra, respond. What, what this is on? discriminatory. It is anti-Muslim. It makes Indian Muslims second-class citizens is Saira Shah Halim's contention. Gaurav, a couple of points. To begin with, this entire act is has a context. The context goes beyond, you know, Mr. Modi becoming the Prime Minister in 2014. This, this has a context way, way back in history. That's point number one. Point number two, this act, how, I want to understand how is it against Indian Muslims in the very first place? We are saying that we are a democracy. We are saying that as a democracy, we have choose, chosen a set of, uh, you know, people to rule, uh, to, sorry, uh, uh, make policies in this country, those set of people very democratically brought in this act. And this act has laid out certain provisions for religious minorities in the said countries that you've been, you know, time and again, you've been, you've, you've been mentioning them. If Saira Shah Alim feels that Ahmadiyya Muslims are persecuted in Pakistan and they, can they apply for Indian citizenship? Well, they can apply for Indian citizenship. It's not like they cannot. Indian government is not asking Ahmadiyya Muslims to just stay away. It is just giving preference to these particular... No, but minor... why hasn't it mentioned Muslims is the point that Saira Shah Halim has raised. Well, why does well, it choose uh, to leave out Muslims? If no, this, it this, doesn't choose this, to leave out. This is anti-Muslim. Let me correct you. Let me correct you. It says minorities in these particular countries. Now, aren't Ahmadiyyas not no, 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 no. Ahmadiyyas not Muslims? The very Saira says they are Muslims. There is a... There. Saira, I'm not in advance. You were speaking, madam. I did not intervene when you were speaking. Extend the same courtesy. You yourself use the word Ahmadiyya and Muslims together, which clearly means they are from the Muslim community. Ahmadiyya Pakistan Muslim. is a Muslim nation. Hold on, madam. Bangladesh is a Muslim country. Afghanistan is a Muslim country. So they obviously they cannot be called minorities in the religious sense of the term. Yes, community wise, certain hardliners, fundus, fundamentalists in Pakistan may not consider Ahmadiyyas and Muslims. But that is a Pakistani problem. However, on human right grounds, if an Ahmadiyya Muslim says they want to accept Indian citizenship, if they apply for Indian citizenship, I don't think Gaurav, the act anywhere says that the existing process of uh, pe people becoming citizens of India has okay. been you know, done away with. Let me this bring is, in Sayyid Asad Abbas. Is... Let me bring in Sayyid Asad Abbas because, you know, Shubhrashtra raises that question and she wants to understand how does this law discriminate against Indian Muslims if hmm. it seeks to give citizenship to persecuted minorities in Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan? Gaurav Saab, I have always been forthright in the debates, especially today on the CAA front. Let me make this very clear. I've always believed if there is great power, there is responsibility and accountability. And to me, as a young Indian Muslim, I think I'm, I need to be responsible in the next statement that I make. Let me make it very clear to you, Sahab. The CAA now, it does not concern any citizen of India, be it Muslim, Hindus or anybody. It is, does not snatch away anybody's citizenship. What does the CA speak of? It's provisions made for Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and the religious minorities there. But I tell you, sir, I have my bone of contention and my reservation here. The CA principally challenges the constitutions 
enriched act of the principal secularism the fact why why is religion become a becoming a participle or a test of giving citizenship that is preferably also as a matter of fact when we mentioned about hazaras ahmadiyas and shias let me tell you they are not even considered muslim by pakistan they are the most uh, uh, persecuted i would certainly say there hasn't been provisions in the same ca there are provisions of asylum but that has existed over the long time why in the ca we don't have the mention of the same not just that there are my why, why do we have mention of sikhs of course there's mention of sikhs Bangladesh. there's very specific mention of sikhs sir but i want to yes, i want yes, to stay i want to stay stay and on the specific aspect of, that you have so raised the point, you have raised a very away. fine point and i want to get back to saira shah halim saira shah halim sayyid asad abbas very rightly points out that caa does not discriminate against any indian muslim so i again want to come back to that point why are some indian muslims or some others up in arms i want to understand specifically on caa saira shah halim that when it does not discriminate against any indian citizen and wants to give citizenship to persecuted minorities minorities it's a very specific act why this object gorav firstly let me make it very clear it's not the indian muslims who are protesting against a very divisive ca it's any peace loving secular law abiding citizen of india who has a problem with caa because it is very clear that the government of the day kept the caa pending for four years and just before the general election the modi government decides to test the waters Make a large attempt, uh, you know, on religious polariz polarization by implementing the CA and law that recognizes citizenship based on religion. So tell me, isn't that part of the? Isn't I'm, the, I'm uh, sorry. Is it, if a if a, if a Muslim is persecuted in Pakistan, that is Pakistan's problem. You know, Pakistan will deal with it. There are multiple countries that will deal with it. I want to understand how does that impact elections in India if. Hindu, Sikhs, Parsis, oh, Jains—you know these we are religions that have originated in this land. You'd appreciate Firstly, that. You will appreciate that. Definitely, I, I appreciate it because, like I said, I you know believe in diversity and inclusion. But here we also need to call out that once a bill, bill's implementation has been done for four years. Then definitely, you know, this will be under the scanner that just before the general election. This is the announcement. So let me ask you one thing very clearly: Has the Ram Mandir issue kind of fizzled out? Isn't that like a trump card for the general election? Because I feel right now the BJP is sounding very uh, inconfident. It's sounding very underconfident because it's then then the opposition should be very happy. Then, if the BJP is uh, not confident, the opposition should be very happy. No, so, so you know that is why I, I want to I, I want to understand this, and I want to take this to Shubhrashtra. The timing, Shubhrashtra, is being questioned. The timing is being questioned that this implementation takes place just weeks before announcement of elections, and Saira Shah Halim insists that the BJP is not confident. In fact, Manikam Tagore of the Congress Party. he went on record to say that the modi government will stop at 220 mat ab ki bar 400 par is all according to the congress just psyops they will stop at 220 that's why in their desperation they brought ca implementation just now i think it's good news for the opposition if that's the case and i hope the opposition stops campaigning all together because the bjp is so jittery that it will win the national elections i think opposition should just hang its boots and say that well we are totally coming in majority and i think we should also get done away with this election hala balu din but hopefully the opposition has some sense and will not campaign from here on considering the fact that they have been underscoring the point time and again that the timing of the you know notification is suspect that bjp is doing it because it doesn't have uh, you know it's a uh, a uh, house in order with respect to development i really wish all these opposition's claims are correct and we have a new you know government at center which is ruled by i don't know who maybe rahul gandhi maybe mamata banerji maybe arvind kejriwal whosoever but moving beyond the politics of this gaurav let me tell you at whatever point in time this in this notification was to come the same kind of banal arguments would have been made that have been made right now right now the conversation is about general elections if it was done 
a couple of months before, after general elections, there would be Maharashtra assembly elections in questions. Post that, there would be Assam elections in question. Post that, there would be Bihar elections in, in question. So we are, a, we are un, until and unless we have a one nation, one election policy, some or the other big state election would always happen. Okay. So people from the opposition will always have this argument no, ready. Sir, you know, Sayyid, Sayyid Asad Abbas, so is the BJP doing vote bank politics or are those opposing CA actually doing Muslim appeasement politics as some in the BJP question? I'll tell you what's happening in our country, uh, Gaurav Sab. As a matter of fact, uh, Shubhrasta ji made this point that one nation, one election. Well respected, ma'am. There is a democracy and we'll come to it. The fact we need to understand, Gaurav Sab, let me admit on your show, there has been persecution. Many of my Sikh brothers that I spoke of who were from Pakistan, yes, there has been attacks on the Gurudwara. There is no doubt about it. No Indian Muslim, mind you, will not want a Sikh brother, a Hindu brother, or any of the minorities persecuted. But the question remains, why is the participle here religion? Why is religion a test of citizenship, whereas our constitution speaks of being secular? How can a secular constitution, a bill, a law be made on religion front? Also, as a matter of fact, Gaurav Saab, let me tell you, I was on another show where I learned there are a Hindu brothers raped and killed in a place called Nangyan Shah in uh, uh, Bangladesh by the Rohingyans. Why no citizenship for them under CA? Why no citizenship for the Sri Lankan Tamil Hindu brothers? That is not talked about. Nepal is not talked about. Myanmar, no. Selectively, you choose three Islamic countries. Okay. Why, Shubhrasta? Could you please answer Shubhrasta, me why? Quick, quick 30 second clarification. Why pick out only three Muslim countries, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh? Well, Gaurav, why pick out three Muslim countries? Because these are the countries that surround us. These are the countries from whom we receive maximum amount of applications. A simple RTI query would have solved this. Uh, Myanmar, you know, that Sri Lanka, are you aware of Sri Lankan Abbas. crisis, ma'am? Sorry? You know the number of Tamil Hindu brothers of ours who are being killed? And who nothing takes away from their seeking As citizenship As I said, Sayyid, in India, you need to either. really Those file an facts. RTI to figure out, make a comparative analysis of it. It's out there. Are humans a, too. You know, we, you can they actually publish a white a paper on number. it. Let's talk numbers. Large numbers and large numbers. numbers. Will, no, no, Sayyid, please understand. You say large numbers. I would say those numbers are not cannot be compared to the numbers that that come from these three so, countries. So does it make? Why don't you find an answer? Stop them so from seeking citizenship of yeah. India, anyways. But again, that aspect will this lead to the kind of agitation? You know, when people say, if you have an issue. You can protest, but you cannot resort to violence. There cannot be rights. That's very clear. And if there are rights, the government, of course, insists that strong action will be taken. If there are issues, go to courts of law. We'll be tracking that story very, very closely. To all my guests, many thanks for joining me.